Okay, so we are in the last session of uh, the legal open house this evening. Uh, we have Mahesh and Pramod ready to take on your questions. So uh, we see, like I said, some on the right side. Uh, plus, please go ahead and uh, shoot your questions at them. Over to you, Mahesh. Over to you. Yeah, thank you, everybody. Yeah, so like you know, either any of you can actually uh, raise your hand and we'll bring you on stage, or you could ask on the chat. And, you know, we'll do our best, you know, to actually reply to those queries here. So who wants to go first? Hey, come on, guys. I'm sure you, you, you have queries. Yeah, who wants to come on the stage? Mahesh, there are questions being asked in the question panel. Okay, and let me in the bring message. Ashwini on the stage. Ashwini. Okay, can an AA service from a TSP of the same group umbrella? Yeah, okay. And okay, how, uh, no, why don't I bring it on him on the stage? Okay, there it is. Okay, can an AA take a service from TSP of the same group umbrella? Yeah, okay. Further, can okay TSP of the same group who uh, provide service to A in turn acquire the service from or oh, this is quite convoluted. I'm getting confused between the thing. How about I bring you on stage? Okay, we want to speak more about the participation terms. Okay, more than uh you know replying to your uh, you know queries about uh, you know the thing. Okay, so you know for your first query, you know can a take a service from the TSP of this, uh, you know, same group? I mean, at least we have not seen anything that you cannot. So you will be able to do it. Further, can such a TSP of the same group who gives a service to, in turn, acquire the service of an other TSP? Yeah, my answer would be yes. Yeah, why do you have this doubt? Yeah, I think you're joining Ashwini. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Switch on your camera, please. Yes, I'm, hope I'm audible. Yeah. Yes, uh, it's like uh, just uh, letting know that uh, at times uh, the services are being uh, resell, resold to a uh, different participants and again in, in, in the same ecosystem. So just in order to have uh, the rights and title to again, pass on the same right and title to another uh, entity. No, no, like uh, are you uh, saying, that, I mean, are you saying that you're an account aggregator and uh, like it will be sold to another company? No, uh, what if uh, some product, uh, some service I take is already being outsourced from another company? No, I think you have to, uh, okay, give me one example. Okay, uh, you, uh, you know, you are an account aggregator, the AAA1. Yes. You are giving a service to FIU1. I mean, uh, I, mean no, uh, I mean, you I mean, you are an account aggregator, I take service from certain TS and uh, that TSP itself uh, acquires some service from another third party. Yeah, but uh, so see, would that, that in least... any way uh, jeopardize the rights and titles of the service? Hi, uh, Mahesh, I have logged yeah. back in. If you would like, I can try and tackle a yeah, sure, question. Please. Uh, so very quickly, uh, TSP, I'm assuming that you are taking some sort of processing service. Uh, it is permitted as long as you are disclosing that and taking the customer's consent. If it is with the data that is flowing from uh, you know, the FIP, but the customer has to consent to your using of the TSP. Uh, remember, in such a situation, once the service is rendered, the data has to be purged. 
it can't be retained by the TSP for any reason uh, beyond what you required it to do. Uh, for the A, again, you have encrypted data. You can't look at the data. So uh, you really have to wonder whether the availing of TSP might actually contradict, uh, you know, the core activity which you are required to perform as an A. So bear that in mind, uh, even as you evaluate engaging a TSP. If it is for, uh, you know, ancillary services, it may still be okay. But your core activity of A should be as a, uh, done by yourself, right, as an A. Okay, but the support services can be uh, outsourced. Yeah, those will come under the normal norms of outsourcing, but consider them support only, not the core activities. Right. right. Uh, there is an interesting question around the amendment clause. Uh, so clearly, uh, you know, what has been committed is that there will be consultation. And I think uh, the way to understand uh, consultation is that uh, there is obviously... Um, uh, you know, circulation of views, comments, what are the revised drafts proposed to look like to all the members that are participants within Samiti. Uh, that feedback and inputs will then get recirculated before it is finally adopted. Uh, so I think that's how you have to look at, uh, Prabhat, the consultation process. Uh, in terms of uh, how it moves or migrates, so as we have a version control, a version change, uh, is when fresh adoption will be required by all the participants. But if it is just incremental changes which are clarificatory in nature, uh, post the same consultation process, after a defined time, they will become applicable to all the participants. The only thing which I would say is that, indeed, uh, one has to think of it as, uh, uh, you know, being... Uh, uh, uniform across the category of participants that those terms apply to. So I think that's the comfort to be drawn from that. Uh, I can see a further question from Apurba, uh, which is... I'm so sorry. Uh, it just keeps jumping. So you... No, no. To... Uh, so it's on the screen now. Okay. Uh, Will the participation terms be made fair for all parties involved? Uh, I think if you have uh, seen both the panel discussion, uh, the keynote, or uh, you know what Shalini outlined, uh, indeed these terms are quite quite fair across the participation categories, uh, whether as a A, whether as a, a, a FIP or a FIU. Uh, so indeed, it is uh, got that fairness built into it. Uh, what I keep urging and which I would urge to the A's, but also really to, uh, you know, all of the uh, players is please don't create documents beyond the participation terms. If at all, of course, give feedback on what you want to see in the participation terms to Samati uh, and only have commercials which are signed up with one another. Because if you add to the documentary mess, it may actually become a problem for you uh, and the parties concerned. So uh, stick to this uh, document. Uh, I can uh, sort of see a question around data privacy. So very quickly, uh, you know, the A framework Prabhat is for the consent, uh, moving, uh, you know, allowing the uh, data to then be transmitted with consent. So this is the data privacy uh, angle, which actually the account aggregator system addresses. In fact, when the PDP bill is going to come, that creates a consent manager as a concept, which is nothing but the A actually in the financial services world, right, uh, for processing that kind of thing. So, uh, so indeed, uh, customer consent drives uh, the transmission of data, and that is how data privacy is uh, given adherence to, that data is controlled by the customer herself. Um, Okay, I'm checking if anything else is there. Uh... So the participation terms do have uh, norms about uh, limitation of liabilities. It captures what is the level uh, extent of indemnity. So do take a look at the participation terms. They are hosted on the Samiti website as well. Exit. So again, Prabhat, it is an item which we debated and discussed quite a bit. I think the way, especially when we are FIPs, what we have to understand is RBI has now empowered the customers to ask for their data via the A's. 
So whether we like it or not, we are required to transmit that information. Uh, so we will never be able to exit that relationship unless RBI denotifies any particular set as FIP, right? Uh, so can we really exit uh, was the question we debated. We've again put it as maybe in the next version, we can try and deal with it. But the reality is that whether we are in the system or not, we may have obligation to transmit. And the one thing which the ecosystem terms do is they provide reciprocity. So we are able to get as much as we transfer or transmit as long as the customer consents. So maybe that is the lens with which to view as to why uh, why one should uh, continue being there. Okay. Uh, okay. Thank you, Pramod. Now we have an, one of them who wants to come on the stage and ask. Hey, sure. Nikhil, what's your query? Hey, hi. Hi, Mahesh. Hi, Pramod. So. I guess this is going to be the, the controversial question of the day. Oh. But uh, <laughs> so, you know, when we talk about these common terms, the, the underlying premise is that, you know, we want to save on the paperwork and the, the incremental amount of permutations and combinations that would probably come about, right? If everyone went and did this individually. And I understand that pricing is something that is not in the ambit. But, you know, uh, from RBI's guideline perspective, where, where you know, A's are expected to publish the pricing, and, and secondly, what's happening is that today the kind of feedback or, or the pushback that we as TSPs or in general, uh, you know, people get is that the difficulty to just, you know, deal with five account aggregators uh, when it comes to pricing, right? I understand that there's a price discovery exercise ongoing, but do you not think that, you know, some language is required in the common terms, not necessarily benchmarking the pricing per se, but, you know, some uniformity or, or, is that something that you would want to see the market evolve and and act on it later? Uh, so very quickly, you know, to my mind, uh, indeed the account aggregators, uh, and it is a free pricing uh, at some level. Yes, they may have publication obligation, so as to speak. Uh, but as a lawyer and not as a business person, Nikhil, the way I would say is that we can't cartelize or we can't sort of say that there has to be uniformity in the pricing by all the A's, right? That would be an anti-competitive measure. Uh, so at least that's my take as a lawyer on that. But let me hand over to Mahesh for, you know, the business response if there is any. No, no, sorry. I, I, I was looking actually at the chat box when Nikhil was asking that. Like, if you can quickly say, so I'm sorry about it. I think, yeah, I think his question was about the pricing by A's, whether huh. there can be uniformity. Think, okay, I'm right? sorry. Uh, okay, can, you. Unless okay. you want to elaborate that. Yeah, yeah, no, no. You see, yeah. uh, currently, the uh, it, it actually says, uh, or, or right, the thing that it is up to each AA on how exactly each one wants to price, and the market will actually decide uh, in, on it. So, uh, un uh, unless the you know like all the AAs like actually agree upon the same rate or the the government says that regulator says that I'm sorry that the rate has to be this I don't see that that it will be a your common pricing so to in short Samati will not get into pricing right it's it's not so much about the the amount itself but you know the the approach. Uh, that that could be better and yeah that's 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 all <laughs> fair enough thank you thank you Mahesh. thank you Prabhu. okay i i have somebody from vayana who has asked i'm not able to actually get it huh there it is yeah i have only invited him uh okay i'm sorry I can mean but see a couple more questions. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. No, sure. okay. uh, yeah. We'll I will know that. Please, I go ahead. Please go ahead. The question was around uh, if you're signing signing these terms through a digital signature, then all the ingredients of a instrument are completed. So if it was just a click wrap, then the final signing part of uh, the four ingredients of an instrument uh, would have not been completed. So what is the view on, has, has a view been taken? Because this will also impact the ability to enforce uh, these terms. 
Uh, so, Lohitesh, the way we look at it is that once you have indicated your acceptance uh, by affixing the digital signature, you are then bound in a commercial contract with all the other participants that have similarly done so. Uh, so, indeed, these terms are enforceable. The manner of enforcement we have again defined, uh, you know, if there is a dispute or if there is an issue, then it comes under the dispute resolution system uh, which Samiti is instituted. Uh, and uh, that is both automated issue resolution that Samati will uh, administer, but also, you know, the mediation or arbitration. So those are the mechanisms that are contemplated and indeed uh, which are uh, in force right now. Just to add to that, if I had to, if I had to make an argument against saying I should not have to, you know, before an arbitrator, before a court, my first argument would be this is not stamped, therefore this is not admissible uh, for any proceeding. The simple alternative is to take out the digital signature, then the four ingredients are not completed. And then you've got cases also which say that uh, it's not an instrument chargeable to stamp duty. So, uh, Loitesh, the way that you have to think about it is that uh, we want an ecosystem which works. If you want to say that you want to be a renegade and question what you yourself are going to commit to honoring or doing, I think that's the wrong beginning point, right? Uh, the intent is again not to save stamp duty either. I think the right example or the right way for an organization would be to make sure that the printed text of the participation terms are duly stamped in its own records and then the digital signature is affixed and uploaded, right? So nobody expects you to not pay stamp duty or take advantage. We are all regulated entities which want to perform the contracts that we actually sign up to. Uh, so taking a defense like that, I think, would certainly be, uh, you know, uh, casting yourself out of the ecosystem for sure and uh, creating your own, uh, you know, other issues for yourselves. Sure. Sure. Thank you for your time. Okay. Thank you. Okay. And now, Juliata, I think I came on stage. Yeah. Hi. Um, I had two questions on obligations of FIUs here. Uh, so two of the things which FIU are expected to do and what my product guys have informed me that it's not practical as of now is firstly notify the AA that a consent is revoked. So from product standpoint, uh, FIUs will just get a notification that a consent is revoked to use the information and hence, of course, they cannot use it further. So I was wondering that whether in the next stage of terms and condition, we can amend those clauses. I understand that regulation wise, we cannot use it once it's uh, revoked the consent. So, uh, Juhilata, the quick uh, answer is that we are reflecting in this obligation what the regulation actually requires. Hmm. Uh, so, you know, it's not as if we contemplated this as an obligation just like that. Again, it is something which can also be sent by the customer to the AA also, or could be notified to the FIU. So to us, the place which gets it is the place which has an obligation. So that's that's the logic for it. But indeed, we'll be watchful yeah. for if the regulator changes the master directions, we will indeed update and reflect it into these uh, terms. Yeah, so because we, I, we understand that it's a regulatory concern, but we don't want to be in breach just because we cannot inform the AA that the consent is revoked. That's the first question. And uh, second thing, again, I'd just like to highlight that there is a clause which says that in case regulations require FIUs to become FIPs, then, uh, of course, we have to adhere to those norms. Yeah. So similarly, from product standpoint, this may have to be included because it's not practically um, invoked yet. Uh, I'm not sure I understood that. But uh, let me reaffirm that reciprocity is a key condition of these ecosystem terms. So unless you are not holding any financial information which RBI master directions require, if you are participant in these terms, it operates on a reciprocal basis. So you could be a FIP and a FIU at the same time, right? For the information that is held by you, which is definitionally financial information. Okay. Oh. Uh, okay. So like if I'm, you know, if I'm right, you are an NBFC, right? Correct. Yeah. Okay. So now that, now you are only an FIU as of today. 
Yeah. Right. Okay. Now there is a okay. Now how, how about we like say after a few months, you know, uh, the the RBI does say that NBFCs will have to share, say for example, statement of our accounts which you have, NBFCs have, and a schema is approved by Rebit. Then you are obligated to also become an FIT. Oh, okay. and, and as a matter of fact, deposits that are placed with NBFC is already part of financial yeah. information, which makes you a FIP already. If you're a deposit taking NBFC. NBFC. Right? Okay. Okay. okay, hope that helps. Yeah. Thanks. Okay, Tressa, I'll, I'll actually get you on. Hello? Am yes. I audible? Yeah. Yes. Hi, Hi Pramod Mahesh. Uh, in fact, uh, this is uh, a query, um, you know, in continuation to something that is already answered by uh, Vamsi, is what I understand. So, uh, uh, basically, what I was trying to say is that uh, since uh, FIU and FIP, um, you know, they are all in the same ecosystem and, uh, you know, now, uh, uh, you know, uh, they are all now linked, right? Uh, and uh, uh, is it, uh, uh, can we now, as FIUs, um, uh, display the uh, logos of uh, uh, these FIPs uh, to uh, let our customers know that uh, yes, you know, now we have uh, uh, the information coming from uh, these many banks, etc. Just, just for the, just for displaying it for representational purposes. So, so the current uh, uh, participation terms are only authorizing one particular use of those trademarks, which is by the A's for allowing customers to link. It is not for the broader FIU universe. And again, something which we can take to the governing council, debate and come back, whether that is to be permitted or not permitted. Does that answer you, Teresa? I think she's gone. Okay, but uh, that's that's at least uh, you know the way to think about it. Uh, I know we are over time. Uh, do we have any uh, time limit? I I don't know the number of attendees. Yeah, so you know, okay, here attendees. one question. Yeah. Okay. So you can see that uh, the one on the screen um on the side yes uh, yeah. from so abura biswas i think that i answered does it cover the issue of limitation on liability so there is an indemnity clause and there are limits on indemnity uh, so that is dealt with in the participation terms apurva you can look at the participation terms they are hosted on uh Samiti site uh, there's Prabhat's questions. How will disputes be resolved between parties that have which are outside its purview? Yeah, so think. really, if a party is if somebody is outside the purview of these documents, then Prabhat, there is no recourse that Samati or the ecosystem terms can offer. But if they are a FIP, FIU, or an account aggregator or the customer, then for sure we have a, a mechanism of addressing those. Um you know, that's it. That's it? Yep. Lovely. Okay, great. So, okay, that's it, right? I mean, yeah, I think it's all done. Thank you, everybody, for coming thank in you. today and asking us. And uh, so back to you, Ruchi. Yes. So thank you, Pramod. I mean, you know, it was very, thank very you. valuable. <laughs> And I, think... I, I know that Ruchi has already mentioned this as the first of the open houses, uh, but genuinely quite happy both to see the interaction and uh, hopefully we have uh, addressed quite a lot. Uh, I think you already also shared Shalini's uh, mail ID as somewhere where they can reach out with more questions. Yes. yes. Uh, but I'm, I'm quite eager to see this ecosystem evolve and uh, grow to the power uh, that, you know, information is being placed uh, in the hands of the customer. So all the very best yes. to everyone. Thank you so much, Pramod. And thank you to all uh, the speakers this evening. And thank you for being such a wonderful audience. Uh, it's amazing to see this kind of interaction and uh, participation. 
please feel free to get in touch with us uh, on the email id mahesh provided in the chat box and all the videos of today's session will be available on our youtube channel by next week for sure <laughs> thank you very much thank you have a good weekend everybody thank you bye bye bye, bye, -bye. everyone bye, -bye.